The food of the Azores reflects its roots. It has the European influence of the Portuguese with a bit of a twist, perhaps because of its position in the mid-Atlantic. That means much of it is locally sourced from the land and sea, and as a consequence, you really notice the freshness when it's on your plate. What's more, it's great value. You can get yourself a steak and a beer and still have change from 10 euros. And that's not the only thing that'll surprise you. The islands are teeming with wonderful restaurants. Don't forget to try the seafood and cheeses, and also some really idiosyncratic bars. For example, Peter's Cafe, now known as Cafe Sport on Fayal. But over in São Miguel, the biggest of the nine islands, they do things a bit differently at dinner time. This rather lunar looking landscape is actually one giant barbecue because in these mounds underneath there's some big pans and inside them something called a cozido. They sit in there for about six hours and they cook using the natural heat of the earth. They bring it out and it smells absolutely beautiful. Although you'd be forgiven for thinking the whole place looks like a secret sect of the clangers. Cafes in the Azores can rustle up a pretty good cup of coffee, but it's another hot drink, a bit closer to the hearts of us Brits, that the island of San Miguel is more closely associated with. That's because it's the only place in Europe that grows and manufactures tea. So what kind of gives it um, the tea here its, a, it's significant taste? What, what makes it special from the Azores, would you say? Uh, we don't have so much tannins as the leaves from Africa, from uh, India. Mm. It's a little bit different from tea from there, but uh, I think it's a good tea too. But normally the British, when they arrived here in the factory, when they drink our tea, it says, oh, it's very refreshing. Really? Yes. Now, Azorian tea tastes pretty good, but in the foothills of the breathtaking Mount Pico on the island of the same name, the drinks are a bit stiffer. The ground upon which these vineyards grow is rugged to say the least. Imagine a man with a crazy paving obsession has gone insane in your back garden and multiply it by a million. Uh, Pico is a very young island, very rocky island, so and Portuguese that came here were actually farmers. So it's kind of hard to farm on the land when you have no land, it's only have rocks. So since they discovered and then they found out that vineyards could, could actually grow and have some good quality wine, um, it's been very important for the economy of the island, especially in the west side of the island of Pico, because you have nothing else besides huge fields of lava. It's just part of our culture, it's part of our menu, you know, you cannot have a proper meal in Pico without have our, having our special wines, some of them very funky tasting, but we love it, we just love it. What is really impressive is the effort and determination that would have been put into growing grapes in the first place. When the settlers first came here, this whole area would have been covered in huge stones. What they had to do was to break it down into rocks about this size and then pile them up before they even entertained the thought of planting any vineyards. After that back-breaking work, they'd have deserved a drink. The white wine of Pico is very drinkable indeed, like a nice Italian, and it only costs about eight euros in one of the local bars, but that's not all that's on offer here. We have um, also a typical local wine called Verdoilo. It's kind of a dessert wine, it's, it's an aperitif wine, and that was, it's the wine that it's been coming from centuries. It's the wine that was famous and exported all around. Once you press the grapes to make the wine, you have, you're left with the grape peels, so we ferment it and we make schnapps. I think the name says it all, Firewater. It's basically, uh, oh, it's 50% proof. So as you can see, as well as tasting great, many of the food and drink experiences of the Azores reveal quite a bit about the culture and history of this place. Quite what a pastry tells you, I don't know, but it's good fun finding out. <laughs>